Okay, hello everyone, and uh, this is a very quick update to the Unroad story. So, um, even though there's been a little bit of a gap between this and the last video, I didn't actually have a disaster, and the up updates to the hardware actually went really well. So, what I've got here is the main Unroad window open, and you can see that the uh, the motherboard there, the ASRock server workstation. Uh, motherboard is detected perfectly well, no worries there. And you can see the Epic, uh, AMD Epic 7551 uh, 32-core CPU with a base clock to uh, gigahertz has uh, been detected without any trouble. So all the calls are showing up and uh, you can see the load on it there, which is pretty low at the minute. It's not really doing very much right now. The other thing I was slightly worried about um, you know, was that the memory would be compatible with this board and all of the 128 gigabytes of RAM have been detected without any problems. So my sort of slight concerns about, you know, getting a, a secondhand Epic CPU off eBay, uh, not exactly unfounded. It's always a bit of a worry buying stuff off eBay, but in this case, the, uh, the CPU works perfectly and, was installed without any difficulties. This is one thing that I actually really like about Unraid is that it's so simple to change hardware around because it all boots off a USB stick. Um, so as long as all your hard drives in your array are detected and your cache uh, caches as well, I've got two caches here. One is a normal drive cache and then the other one is actually used for running databases. As long as they're all detected correctly, it's unlikely that you're going to have any issues swapping hardware around and it'll just sort of work uh, without any problems and that's the case for this uh, for this um, this setup the only other thing I changed when I was uh, updating it was I changed uh, a 500 gigabyte hard drive that I was using for Windows to a 500 gigabyte NVMe 2 drive and that change over i didn't try and um, move the windows installation i just deleted it and started again there wasn't a whole lot on there uh, so there was no problem in me doing that so i just set up a new windows install which you can see i've uh, remote desktop into here um, that runs entirely off that uh, mvme2 drive now so it doesn't have uh, any uh, storage on the cache it's just using that uh, NVMe 2 drive for all of its space um, so it's limited to 500 uh, gigabytes at the moment at least but that's perfectly fine one of the reasons I actually wanted to switch to the Epic system was to increase the number of PCIe slots I had available in the server um, for things like extra NVMe storage, but also down the line, perhaps uh, additional GPUs and things like that. And my original setup using the dual X99 setup, although I really like that board, it's a bit limited on the uh, on the uh, PCIe slots. So it's a bit of a shame, really, because otherwise it was a great uh, a great setup. And I, I will keep that probably and use it for something else. Um. But I get a few more cores and I've got a higher base clock here. In terms of power consumption, I'm not sure if there's a whole lot of difference really. I haven't actually tested it. Um, and the this CPU, I think you can get an all core turbo of about 2.5 gigahertz. And then I think you can get a one, a one core turbo, something like three gigahertz. I had a quick look to see if it was turboing okay. And it does, I had a few calls then at 2.5 that were doing things. So it seems to be all working. One thing I did forget to set up is, which I think if I load the system info, is that one? I forgot to turn on IOMMU. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to dial in, uh, reboot the system at some time and, and sort of put that, put that right in the BIOS. Because that's what allows you to uh, pass things like GPUs and USB cards through to uh, virtual machines. And I do want to do that. So um, I need to change that setting. But that's not a massive rush. I can do that uh, at some point soon. 
Um, you can see the system has been up for five days now and uh, it's working perfectly. One of the things I use this for is hosting Neo4j databases and other kinds of databases and all of that uh, setup transferred without any issues as well. So it was a really straightforward plug and play replacement basically, which is nice. And there's all my Docker containers, don't have that many, um, but they're all working perfectly. The virtual machines that I wanted to transfer over did. Um, got them some, I'm experimenting a little bit here with uh, LDAP clients and servers, which actually I might consider using the old server for that actually. Um, I don't know, I haven't quite decided if I'm really that uh, wedded to moving to this kind of server client setup or not really. It might be a lot of work for a little gain. So yeah, I'm really happy with this uh, system and I think, I haven't tried it yet, but there is a management system built into this. Um, so if I type in web address, which I think is 39. Yep, so this is the ASRock uh, IPMI setup, and I believe the default password, which I will change, is just admin admin. Yep, and here we go. So this is the IPMI uh, interface to that new server motherboard. There's another reason why I was quite excited about um, changing to this system is that I can do a bit more remote administration, uh, particularly because now the server is in a garage and not in the house, which uh, isn't very far away, but you know, it's, it's a bit different. So um, I can monitor it and if necessary, reboot it from there. I haven't looked at what kinds of settings I can change. Um, it is possible that I could change that IP, um, IOMMU setting. Um, I think that's probably a little bit beyond what you can do without actually going into the BIOS. Um, but I'll have a look. But yeah, no, I get a system interface here and you can sort of check all the different sensors and so on. So that's a nice little, I mean, I don't really need it because I've, I've you know, I could walk <laughs> the not very long distance to the server and, and maintain it. Um, but it's a nice little thing to have. So there we go. There was a quick update just to let you know that it all went smoothly. And um, once again, upgrading an unraid system is dead easy. Um, so that's really cool. I may, it's gone so well, actually, I may think about getting another one of these for the other server uh, in the future, uh, perhaps when I can afford a slightly higher spec um, Epic CPU, because uh, I would need a little bit more single core performance on the other server, really, for a few tasks, but actually, perhaps not too bad. Although, to be honest, maybe Epic's not the right platform for that one. Maybe something like a Ryzen system would actually be, in many ways, uh, much cheaper and better for the kinds of things that I do. So maybe when I upgrade one of my desktops, I'll push one of the Ryzen uh, boards down into the server, which uh, is what I tend to do quite regularly uh, for these things. In fact, my old server is now Media Center, which works quite well. So yeah, there's a quick update. Um, hopefully it'll give you a little bit of courage to maybe go for an Epic system off eBay now that you can get the first gen ones quite cheap and they're quite good fun. Um, if not, uh, Unraid is definitely worth checking out on any platform, really. Any, uh, any basic platform will give you something to play with. So I hope you found this video inter interesting and I will see you in the next one.